Modern Monday. Well, it's Halloween, so why not review a Christmas movie? A Christmas horror movie, Krampus. There's been tons of Christmas horror movies over the decades, and many involving an evil Santa. There is even another Krampus movie from 2013, but this is the 2015 version we're talking about, the one that was a major theatrical release. Anyway, what caught my eye on this one is that it was written and directed by Michael Doherty, or Doherty. He's the guy who made Trick or Treat, which was probably the most Halloweenish Halloween movie ever made. But I already reviewed Trick or Treat, so how about Krampus? Especially since I came close to reviewing it last year, but by the time I saw it, Star Wars The Force Awakens was out, and I needed 31 horror movies, so better to save it. Krampus is basically an evil version of Santa from European folklore. While St. Nicholas would reward the good children, Krampus would punish the naughty ones. It begins with your average family stressing out over the holidays and not getting along with relatives. It's a lot like Home Alone or National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Here, a young boy, Max, runs up to his room, disenchanted with the holiday spirit, and tears up a letter he wrote to Santa. This sets off a curse. A freak blizzard hits, the electricity in the whole neighborhood goes out, and then a whole army of assorted holiday monsters wreak havoc. Going into this movie, knowing it was going to be some kind of evil Santa, this caught me off guard. I didn't expect such an abundance of Christmas creatures and less focus on Krampus. There's snowmen, teddy bears, gingerbread men, a jack-in-the-box, elves, and finally, the title character appears at the very end, looking very creepy with a perpetual open jaw. Even though there's some genuinely creepy moments, it's largely a very tongue-in-cheek, fun movie. The gingerbread men are especially humorous. Anytime you have a bunch of tiny guys running after you, it's funny. It's like Army of Darkness, and their voices sound just like the gremlins. The effects are great. It seems like they use CG when it's absolutely necessary, but thankfully, most of the time, it's practical. I also really like the wintry landscapes, which gives you the sense of cold nature closing in on you. The characters are kind of stock, but they all handle the parts well. Each actor sticks to their respective archetype and plays it consistently. The best character is the grandma, who's had a past experience with Krampus. This is all told through a great flashback scene in a stop-motion style. Stop-motion also seems to be a Christmas tradition. There's one tiny thing that confuses me. For the first half of the movie, the grandma speaks in German, but she's having conversations all the time with Max. Her dialogue is in German, but his is in English, so they go back and forth speaking two different languages. I don't understand why that was necessary. I just thought it was an odd choice. And as soon as we get to the flashback, she switches to English. Come to think of it, a bigger thing that bothers me is that they're trying to find the daughter who's out in the blizzard, and you'd think they'd be more urgent. Any parent would be panicking and going crazy, but instead they're always calm about it, like, oh, we'll find her eventually. There's a lot of things this movie reminds me of, like The Mist, which is about people trapped in a store while an intense fog envelops everything and brings monsters with it. But mainly, it's a throwback to older films like the Puppet Master series or anything from the Full Moon Company. It seems like something that could have been made in the 80s or 90s direct to video, except done on a bigger scale and released in theaters. I would have been interested to see it done as a serious holiday horror film and not as much of a horror comedy. It seems almost like it was trying to be the ultimate Christmas horror comedy, and if so, it was a good attempt, but you still can't top Gremlins. Anyway, it's Halloween. Have a good one, and make sure to go back and watch my older reviews if you haven't. There's now 10 years of Monster Madness history. Even movies I've reviewed outside of Monster Madness, there's hundreds. The first year was good for a basic history, a horror film 101. There was the Godzilla-thon with reviews of all the Godzilla movies. The third year, I opened it up to a whole grab bag of random horror films, both famous and obscure. Then there was Camp Cult, which was a lot of fun because I got to talk about some of the sillier films. Sequel-a-thon was a blast, where I got to cover the whole Universal Frankenstein series in depth, also the Halloween series and others. 
Then there was the 80s a-thon, which was great. And then another sequel a-thon where I got to cover everything from Gamera to Aliens. Since then, in later years, I just covered any random movies I could, knocking off lots of wish list titles. If you're new to Monster Madness, I'd say definitely go back and check out the older reviews. Most of them are not on YouTube. Go on Cinemassacre.com and look it up on there. It was an awesome 10 years, and the only reason it was possible was because of all you showing your enthusiasm. I hope it piqued your interest with some movies that you'd enjoy. I hope it helped expand your movie knowledge, and likewise, I learned from all you too. But now I'm looking forward to new projects. I'll always be celebrating Halloween with you in some way. There will probably always be some kind of horror movie reviews on Halloween, but I currently have no more plans of doing a full 31 marathon. Instead, I will be using the time differently to bring to life some of my other ideas that have always been on halt. One possibility, I could be doing more movie reviews spread out throughout the year rather than all in October, and hopefully I can get started on a new film project. Halloween is a transitionary period, as we're about to cross over from the fall into the winter. Going all the way back to Halloween's origins, the festival of Samhain, this time of year is when the worlds of the living and the dead become closer. The crops were beginning to die, so this was a very creepy time back then. Some say that there were offerings and sacrifices made to bring good fortune, so today, I sacrifice monster madness to bring in a new, healthy harvest. Oh.